this video lesson, I want to show you how to play the chords for Djangology on the mandolin. It's the rhythm part for this classic tune by Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli. And the chords that we're playing is like diminished chord, minor seventh, uh, major sixth, well, dominant seventh chords, well, a lot of very useful chords that you can also apply to other swing and jazz tunes. So pay attention to this and you will get a lot out of it. So let me show some three string movable chord shapes. Jangolody chords. Here we go. My name is Magnus Sedlun and I help mandolin players just like you get to the next level. If you're new here at the channel, make sure you subscribe. We have new videos like this coming out every week. Also hit that bell notification button and you'll get notified as soon as we publish a new video. And for an enhanced learning experience, I recommend you check out Mandolin Secrets Academy. You find the sheet music, the tabs, the chord charts, the play along, the backing tracks for this tune and all the other lessons here at the YouTube channel. And even you can connect with me and all of the other hundreds of wonderful mandolin players for, from all over the world. So check it out, you find more information at mandolinsecrets.com. Yes, I want us to start the lesson by listening to me while I'm playing it through twice. Also here on my guitar buddy, Hayes Griffin. And um, yes, after that, I want to give you some like insights about the, the chord shapes and also going to break it down and play it slow for you. But here we go at 135 beats per minute, Djangology, the chords on the mandolin. One, two, and one, two, three, four. Yes, there you can also hear the form is like A, A, B, A, then it repeats again. So a very standard kind of form for a, a jazz standard and swing music like this. But uh, let me point out a few things about the chords and uh, then we also will play it slow for you. But a few more small details that I want to point out. If you got the PDF in front of you, you can see that we're using this three string chords. I really like them because they are movable and they are very easy for our fingers. And uh, first chord is this A with this. Then if you're jumping like 
two chords ahead. It's this G. You can see it's movable like this, the same shape. So going from A to G. But then there's also right in between like a diminished chord. The diminished again. Well, I already played that. But one thing that I want to point out also, this um, most often the second chord coming after the A chord, this one is most often in chord charts described as an C minor sixth chord. And uh, that's also how it's notated in most uh, chord charts for this one. However, I like treating this as a diminished chord, so a C diminished. And I guess two reasons. First of all, it feels good to have this pattern. And I think it sounds good to my ears. And I think the reason why it sounds good is also because the melody actually outlines a diminished chord. So the melody plays a C diminished. That's why it makes perfect sense to play a C diminished chord here also. So uh, very simple. It's this A chord going to the G chord and then you're like a way to get from that one to the next you put in the diminished. Go into the A minor 7, D7. This is a nice 6. Well, it's all in the PDF. You can just follow it there. Yeah, and if you want some further guidance on these three string jazz chords, I can really recommend my, my video course, the Jazz Comping Guide, showing you everything about this. And if you've been through the course, playing Jangology will be a piece of cake. But um, yeah, I recommend it, the Jazz Comping Guide. Check it out if you, if you haven't seen it before. Also, a very, very good way to get into this is actually playing this tune. So here we go, Jangology uh, at the slow tempo. This is 90 beats per minute. One, two, and one, two, three, four. Yes, there you got it. And of course, we're using this four to the bar approach. Very typical for this style of music. Yes, my friend, that's it for Jangology. And a, also a good tip to memorize the chord uh, structure and all that. Learn the melody because the information is already in there in the melody. If you got that one, it will be easy to to learn the rhythm part, I would say. Well, and the other way around as well. So it's always good knowing both the chords and the melody. 
especially if you want to go into improvisation and soloing. It's uh, it's the, like the two foundations for that, the chords and the melody. And that's actually the third lesson in this series for Djangology. But no, that's another day. All right, my friend, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. And we would also be very happy if you'd like to leave a comment below, letting us know how you find the three string chord shapes. Are you using them? Are you fond of them? Do you prefer like four string chords? What is your story? Let us know below. All right, my friend, thank you so much for watching. See you in a new video soon. Thank you.